Well, I thought we'd have a bit of a look at this um, magazine in this video um, about the, the Commodore. What's it say? How the Commodore became world class. And uh, it, well, this particular magazine goes into quite a lot of information um, ranging from VB to VR. And, you know, I mean, I know a lot of people like to cast a lot of shit over them and, you know, Everybody's got their opinion. Oh, they're not a nut. They're just a blue apple in sheep's clothing. But there were more more Australian um, components in this car than what people uh, realise. And you know, I know it's gonna it's gonna cause a lot of um, what would you say? The keyboard warriors. As one another article that I read, they said if you really want keyboard warriors to come out off their pedestals and start typing. Post something about first-gen Commodores, because that's sure to get them going. And saying all of that, we've got here the coming, the coming of Commodore. Of course, you know, a lot of people, they just saw it as, as an Opal car. But they don't realise um, how, how many millions of dollars um, General Motors Holden in Australia put into this car um, and they weren't allowed to spend a lot of money because it was supposed to be a world car that you just built and you know the company's just built and it was supposed to be good good to go sort of thing but um, of course when they first brought them out here or some of the the opal uh, variants they just couldn't they just couldn't handle it so they had to uh, you know beef them up with uh, you know stronger a uh, bit of reinforcing here and a bit of reinforcing there and and borrowing a lot of parts from Kingswood, um, actually. So, you know, this this crap where people go on, oh, there's nothing but a bloody glorified Opal, is a little bit of a broad statement because um, if you really, really go into the nitty-gritties of it, um, there was a lot more Holden componentry in this car than what people give it credit. Um, they had this... Dis design of this car uh, a good 10 years before um, it was re released here in Australia or nine years or something like that some stupid thing like that and of course you know uh, Kingswood and Premier there was a little more than a year to go before the really big change came to General Motors Holden and that really big change was spelt Commodore and of course then it goes on about the Tiranas and things like that because I believe they were uh, one of the options was that they could have kept the Kingswood uh, platform and just replaced the um, the Tirana with the new Commodore. But um, as money was a bit tight and all the rest of it, they couldn't really afford to have too many cars on the go, so they uh, opted to scrap the lot and just go Commodore. Whether it was a good decision or a bad decision, um, you know, I'll leave that up to you people, and I know you will. And uh, here's another another nice photo of an early Commodore. But, um, and it goes on just to say about how they, um, you know, they used the, or the, the Kingswood SL corresponded closely to the standard Commodore. And, um, of course, the Commodore had slightly better finishes, uh, or, as they said, a bit more... Uh, upmarket sort of thing in the next entry level uh, to what the standard SL Kingswood had. Whether they're right or wrong, I do not know. But, uh, you know, that's that can be left up to conjecture. And I mean, the big, the real big change was that um, a lot of the early Holdens, you could either have bucket seat or you could have a, a bench seat and fit six people in the car. But of course, you couldn't do that very well in the Commodore because they were only offered with the, a bench seat. And, of course, naturally, being Australians, um, I think the first thing they wanted to do was see if they could fit a, a V8 in these things uh, and put the, the two variants of V8s that uh, Holden had available. And um, I, th I believe that they... Um, I think this car was originally designed to have a uh, reticulating ball system, and Holden's actually won the day on that to get it changed to... Um, just a, a rack and pinion without the reticulating ball um, so they could actually squeeze a, a V8 into it 
which is very cool. So, um, and of course, back in the day, they, if you had an air conditioner in a six, it did used to sap out a lot of it, you know, power from the motor. So you virtually did need a V8 uh, a long time ago to, to make an air conditioner really work and make the car go better too. You know, so the SL had the 3.3 litre engine and the standard equipment. Most other additions over the standard model were mirrors embracing um, such items as twin external mirrors, chrome wheel trims, variants, you know, and it just goes on about all the different uh, levels that were, were put into the car compared to what they were putting in the Kingswoods uh, just prior. And then it goes on again about the the um, wheel sizes and you know all all the all the good stuff there. And of course, I don't really have to tell you people much about it because I think you already really know and you've already made your minds up. So I don't really have to say a great deal about this article. Anyway, there's another picture of an early girl, be it black and white. And um, you know then we've got uh, you know different things what they had many SLEs were equipped with five litre engines power windows central locking the big V8 could all be also be ordered with manual transmission in this form of Commodore which was very good and the Commodore could run a standing 400 metres in 16.4 seconds achieved a top speed of more than 200 kilometres an hour so uh, all the people that have said that you know, the V8s didn't have the, they, only, they were only slightly more powerful, the six-cylinder was more powerful. I mean, I must say, there's a lot of crap talked about these cars, an absolute lot of crap. And, um, you know, uh, yes, admittedly, the first ones weren't all the great, but any car that's made, the first one is not a real great car. Um, but, yeah, the, the, the crap that gets talked about these cars is just absolutely um, unbelievable absolutely unbelievable and you know I, I even though I've got a, a, a VH I I don't mind the look of the uh, the VB or the VC uh, Commodores as uh, a friend of mine says they look very very aggressive and of course when this uh, car was being made they happened to produced the four millionth Holden, um, which happened to be a Commodore, which some people do say it wasn't a Holden, but it was. And they were made here, made, made using BHP still and employing people. So, you know, uh, as I said, a lot, of, a lot of crap is talked about it. And, um, you know, I think it's the same, the same sort of um, rubbish gets uh, put out about British Leyland with some of their cars too. But... Um, it seems to be that a little bit more gets put out about um, Holdens and, and the first generation Commodores, you know, and, and it's really it's really unwarranted. And as I said, it's over 40 years ago now. It should be all dead and buried and, you know, but I, I just still cannot believe how people get so, so emotional about it and the cr absolute rubbish that they come out with. And half of these people that are commenting weren't even around with these when these bloody cars came out. So I don't see how they have an authority to even talk about it. I must say, I do like the, the uh, shadow tone paint on this one. This is absolutely gorgeous. SLE. And it's got SLE on the side with the Commodore name. And um, those wheels and that silver and dark blue or something metallic paint whatever it's very very cool and i believe part of the shadow tone paint thing was to um because people felt they were a bit small the uh, the commodore and um, they tried to make the car look bigger by um, you know mixing up paintwork and doing all sorts of things i mean even when they got to the vh they um, they made the front uh, just that little bit longer and made the the lights sit in a bit more uh to give it give it a bit more of a longer look um, and give it that feeling of a bit more, oh, it's not as small as what people are saying, you know, because as I said, you know, people were going, they, they were still, a lot of people were still liking uh, the the big Falcons and the Valiants at the time. And um, by the time, you know, 
people were saying, oh, I don't mind that kind of people. Said, no, you don't want that. It's too small, you know. And uh, But to, to try and offset that, that's what uh, General Motors tried to do by, you know, mixing it up a bit, as they say. And, uh, of course, there's a VH uh, Commodore wagon. And by the time they got to that, it was... It was felt that they really did need a bigger change and more aggressive change in size, uh, but they seemed to think that, um, you know, it was, was it a case of uh, too little change too late or was it the basic formula, formula uh, so close to perfect that few changes were needed? Well, you know, I, I sort of think, well, I, I quite like the VH myself, um, but that's just my personal opinion. They probably should have um, changed earlier because by the time they got to VH, um, Holdens were in real dire straits and um, almost at the verge of um, shutting down, I believe. Uh, things were that uh, dire for them. And then, of course, it goes into the, the first big change. And, of course, that big change was the VK Commodore. Um, some people like them. They're not that much different to a, a, a VH, the, the previous model. The only major, major difference was that they put in a, a back rear quarter window. So it gave you a six six windows and just gave it a bit more lighter light inside the uh, the cabin. And, and it gave it that feeling of a bit more space because it was a bit more light and airy uh, type of thing. But um, basically, you know, the, the front uh, lights are the same. And um, but they'd, by then they'd done away with the um, uh, chrome bumper bars and gone all plastic, uh, which made it uh, they could make it look a little bit longer again uh, by by doing that too. So it was all about smoke and mirrors and you know trying to make things look better. And of course too by the VK they went to the black six cylinder motor and were adding a bit of fuel injection and more. Um, what would you say, more um, uh, fuel um, emission controls and things like this because um, governments were re starting to regulate a lot more on that sort of thing. And, of course, by the time they got to um, do the VK, um, the time was really running out for the old uh, the old straight six of Holdens that served them well for many, many years. I mean, even though even though they say that the um, the VK was the the first big change, um, I would really put it down to the VL was the bigger changer of the lot um, because it was a, a little bit more stubbier uh, looking. I I absolutely do like the uh, the front, a bit more plasticky, um, you know, not what I'd call probably the best best finished car um, in terms of materials, but um, still very, very stylish. And, you know, I do love that front uh, grille. And, of course, the main big change was that they were putting in a Nissan, third, a Nissan RB30 motor in it. So that by that time, um, they really had to do a lot more for emissions and they didn't have the money or the, the anything to replace the ageing six. So um, they went sort of cap in hand to uh, to Nissan and asked if they had a motor they'd heard about. And Nissan said, oh, well, we've got this RB30, you know, try it out. And they did. And it was a great, great success for not only for uh, Holden, but also for uh, Nissan themselves in their skyline. And, uh, of course, as you can see, it's got a, a thinner thinner lights and uh, the bonnet doesn't extend all the way out to the uh, the grill uh, the bonnet is in in board a bit but um, yeah it's, it's still a nice looking car but like i said um i i like i like the shape and i like the style of the vl but just where i where it lets me down personally is mainly because i like chrome stuff um it was a a bit more plasticky for for my uh, my liking, but nevertheless, still great car, absolutely great car, and um, you know not that much variation uh, in the uh, in the layout, but um, just a little bit more updated to uh, late eighties uh, styling of um, car design on the interior, and 
then it just, the main article there is about the um, about the old 3.3 litre uh, straight six, of course, which they had to replace, and, and uh, uh, this was its um, replacement, which was the RB30, which um, was a three litre Nissan six, um, and it was a brilliant engine. Oh, I must agree with that absolutely. I think um, there's a lot of people out there that you know they absolutely adore rb30s and it was probably one of the best the best moves and the best uh, joint ventures that holden's ever ever did and of course if you really if you really loved your vo you could get it uh, all tricked out like a walkinshaw and you know have all uh, hsv and walkinshaw um, uh, body kits on it and um, yeah make it look almost like a batmobile <laughs> especially with that back bit there it almost looks like a batmobile but still very very cool i do love that do love that look um but it was the Kelly, of course which was the more luxurious um uh, of the uh, of the vls and um yeah i mean that was another big change too they started using fancy names like Kelly and and uh, well i think they did that back in the vk didn't they uh you know Kelly and and uh, it, it, what was it? The SL became executive, you know. So uh, they, they was they were really trying to emphasise that, you know, even though you had a bog standard car, it was an executive. You know, it was it was all right. You know, it's what the blue blue collar worker would have uh, had. You know, <laughs> trying trying. What do they say? Um, dr dressing mutton up as lamb. But still, I I think it nice. I think all these early model Commodores have a, a great, um, great style and a great history too. And of course, who can forget the Kelly Turbo and a very digital looking turbo um, lettering on the, the front there. And then we go there. Later, we got the Turbo, which was one of the quickest sedans on sale of all time. And um, yeah, I believe the you know, the turbo ones were absolutely monstrous. They you know they really had some get up and go in them. So as I said, you know it really and um, that really brought the game back to um, Ford um, because actually when they were doing the VH, uh, believe it or not, I mean Ford was outselling them, but also even Mitsubishi with their Sigma was outselling them. So Holden's were really, really struggling for a while, and it wasn't until they got to the the VL uh, model uh, and and with the RB30 that things started to really turn around for the General. And then, of course, we have the the next big, big change, which was when Holden's started going back to a a larger format car, which was the um, the VN Commodore, and uh, and it had a, a V6 in it. So. Um, Anyway, I thought we'd just go up to, to VL. I am showing you a little bit of VN. Um, if you guys, if I think you guys have enjoyed it or if you say you enjoyed this, uh, the first part of this, I will continue on and we'll move on to VR. But um, until then, I think we'll just, uh, we'll leave it at that. And uh, I'll say thank you very much for, for watching. Um, I, know I'm, I know it sounds a bit terse, but, you know, uh, I just get a little bit, fed up with all the negativity there is no what would you say there's not much uh, good criticism um, and when I mean that not constructive criticism it's just uh, basically negative um, talk which is very very uncalled for um, because I mean the Holden engineers they put a, a lot of time and effort into trying to make a good thing a bad thing good and, you know, and in, in lots of circumstances or respect, they actually, they did win uh, eventually. I mean, it took them a few years, but um, they finally got there. And like I said, with all the money constraints, they just couldn't, um, they couldn't do what they really wanted to do. So um, they had to do with what they had around. So I trust you enjoyed this bit of a brief look at um, the early model Commodores and um, looking even though that says on here from VB to VR, we've just been looking from VB to VL. And like I said, if you if you enjoyed this, let me know, and I'll uh, we might do the next section from VR uh, from VN to VR. 
So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.